All right, they are taking a break. That lets me reintroduce my guests. You know that Josh Ritter, criminal defense attorney, is still with us. And also Neil Rockheim, the Rockweiler, also a great criminal defense attorney, also with us. So, Neil, I want to go to you right now. The medical examiner was asked whether the wounds, for instance, the superficial wounds, including the ones on the hands of the victim here, and I say victim because that's what the state says, and I should say she's a victim no matter what, but that they're consistent with being defensive wounds. But does that mean they're consistent with something else? Could they be consistent with defensive wounds from assault, an assault by another person? What is the defense? So great to be here. Hey, Josh, uh, great to see you. Defensive wounds are something that a, a medical examiner um, is offering an opinion about. And, and essentially, um, anytime anybody's been in any sort of a fight, or has been stabbed or has been hit. It's very common for somebody to attempt to put their hands up to try to defend themselves or to block the blow, sometimes even to try to grab the weapon itself, like to grab the knife. And so there will be defensive wounds or things that one can argue resemble defensive wounds when a victim or someone who was the recipient of an attack is attempting to, to, to rebut or, or defend themselves. They could be defensive wounds. They could be wounds that they inflicted, could be wounds that they inflicted while they were attacking um, and that the other person inflicted in, de in, in defense. But the, the, the common theme here that the medical examiner is trying to, to, to articulate through the prosecution is that all these wounds look like the sort of things you would find on someone who was defending themselves from an, an attack by another. And you mentioned those words, possibly self-inflicted. Uh, that's going to be a big issue, but I don't think with the wounds of Kay Baker, maybe with the other person in the courtroom called the defendant. We'll listen to that or hear about that later, I assume. Anyhow, we're going to take a quick break here at the Long, Long Crime Network. When we come back, we'll be talking more about the trial in Florida, death penalty case, Florida versus Matthew Terry. Stay with us. Rock on. Uh, I was uh, commenting all the way through this. Stop with the possible, consistent with. I mean, how did she die? Did she bleed out? Did, was, was she suffering at all? This is a death penalty case. Get to it. When the jury, by the way, hears tomorrow that his previous girlfriend was stabbed, why is the prosecution going on to these hypotheticals? I can't answer that. They should. He shouldn't be. It seems like he's sort of spinning his wheels and it's overkill. Sometimes prosecutors and defense lawyers, but in this case, a prosecutor appears to be over trying his case. It means we get it. We understand, get to the meat of it. Quit trying to tell us about the sesame seeds and the bun and the dimensions of the bun. We understand it's a bun. Get to the heart of it. And this prosecutor is just not doing it. And the judge, to his credit, doesn't want the prosecutor to approach and to try to push or prod or explain at the bench when the jury's not there um, and try to get him to undo his ruling. So good for the judge. Um, the fact is, is that the prosecutor could be doing so much more with this witness than just asking her possible and is this consistent with, look, she's a medical examiner. She's a doctor. She does autopsies and determines cause of death. If she can't answer questions about how this happened and compare it to the weaponry or the items in this case and say, this is what happened, in my opinion, and I'm willing to tell you that under oath so the jury can rely on it when they go back in the jury room, then he shouldn't be asking the questions and she shouldn't be um, and she shouldn't be put to answer them. Yeah, and she shouldn't be willing to answer uh, them either. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break here at the Long Crime Network. We're going to come back and we'll see whether or not the prosecutor tries to keep asking questions to kind of, let's shall we say, put a roadblock in for what he anticipates the defense will say rather than proving his case. On the other side, stay with us. Yeah, and, and Neil, let me just ask you this. This is a death penalty case, obviously. The judge ruled this morning that the attack in Michigan is going to allow it to be come in. The girlfriend, Michelle Rogers is her name, and the detective will be testifying before the jury. Will the jury need anything else to discount anything the defense puts forward for defense? It's unlikely. They, they, they likely are going to hear that, as, as the judge ruled, that the defendant has attacked two different women, um, one killed, one seriously attacked, for which he ended up going to prison. Um, that's going to look pretty bad. Want to know why it looks pretty bad? Because it is pretty bad. It's pretty damning, compelling evidence that he has had two separate women in his life who have been beaten, 
injured or harmed and one killed at his hands. And he's going to have a very can't really explain it. What's his, what's his defense going to be when they offer that evidence? His explanation is going to be they were different women, different circumstances. It was just, uh, and the prosecution is going to respond, and, and they're going to respond and say, look, the doctrine of chances, the likelihood that he ended up yeah. injuring or two women who were with him, boyfriend, girlfriend situations, that two different women ended up being seriously injured, one in Michigan, one who died um, in, yeah. in Florida, that somehow that that was by chance, that was an accident. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it's a it's a very difficult fact, fact for them to overcome. And I agree that really is where the rubber meets the road, in my opinion, in the case. Uh, Neil and Josh, I think you both obviously are great trial attorneys and have hit the issues perfectly. I have to sign both of you all. Say goodbye to you for another time. Uh, when we come back, we will have new guests and we'll be discussing Florida versus Matthew Terry. Is he guilty? Stay with us.